This is the part 3 of our discussion of Rule 68. Let's begin our discussion through a bar exam question. This was asked in year 2000. Take note of 5% yan. Malaki yan. AB mortgaged his property to CD. AB was not able to pay his obligation. Therefore, itong si CD filed an action for foreclosure of mortgage. After trial, the court issued an order. What is the order all about? It granted the prayer of CD for foreclosure of mortgage. Also, in that order, nakasulat dyan na AB should pay CD the full amount of the mortgage debt not later than 120 days. 120 days counted from when? From date of receipt of the order. AB received the order on August 10, 1999. After August 10, no other proceeding took place thereafter. On December 20, 1999, that is exactly four months after, AB tendered the full amount to CD, but CD refused to accept the amount. Ano ang ginawa ni AB? AB filed a motion in the court praying that CD be directed to receive the amount tendered by him. Ano ang naging action ng court? The court denied his motion. So, aggrieved, AB files a petition for certiorari against the court and CD. Question, will the petition for certiorari prosper? Explain. So, what can you recall about your Rule 65? Kailan pumapasok ang certiorari? When the court exercising a judicial function acted without jurisdiction and excess or of his jurisdiction or with grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction. Ano pa ang requirement ng Rule 65? There is no appeal nor plain, speedy, and adequate remedy in the ordinary course of law. With that in mind, Ano ang, tan ano ang sagot mo ngayon sa tanong, will the petition for certiorari prosper? Answer is definitely yes. Bakit naging yes? Recall the procedure. After you file your complaint, what will happen next? There will be a trial. And if during the trial, sabi nga ng section 2, if upon the trial in such action, the court shall find the facts set forth in the complaint to be true, what will the court do now? It will render a judgment. It will render a judgment. And on the basis of that judgment, if you party are not happy with the decision or the judgment rendered by the court, you can file an appeal or other post-judgment remedies. So, yan ang procedure ng Rule 68. But Section 2 is also very clear that in the judgment rendered by the court, it should indicate the sum found due. Also, in that judgment, dapat nakasulat dyan na order ni judge si mortgager to pay the sum found due to the court or to the judgment obligee. And what is the period? The period is not less than 90 days nor more than 120 days from the entry of judgment. And that is what we call your equity of redemption. The period is your equity of redemption. And ano ang sinasabi natin palagi? That period should be indicated in the judgment because that is a substantial requirement. The period given in Section 2 is not merely a procedural requirement. That is a substantial requirement. Sabi nga ng Supreme Court, that is a substantive right granted to the mortgage debtor as, that is, as it is his last opportunity to pay the debt and save his mortgage property from final disposition at the foreclosure sale. Therefore, that period cannot be omitted. But ano ang ginawa ni Judge sa ating problem? He did not issue an 
a judgment or a decision, what he issued is a mere order. Magkaiba ba yun? Siyempre, magkaiba yun. Siguro si judge na lito, no? Kasi, ang sabi nga naman ng section 2, you, in, uh, you judge in your judgment, you should order the mortgager to pay to the court or to the judgment obligee. So, ang ginawa ni judge, dumiretso na lang siya sa paglabas ng order instead of a decision. Let's emphasize equity of redemption. What is the period again? Paulit-ulit that is 90 up to 120 days. But saan mo kinakount ang 90 up to 120 days? What is your reckoning date? That is from the entry of judgment. Ano ba itong entry of judgment? Rule 36, Section 2, very clear. The date of finality of the judgment or final order shall be deemed to be the date of its entry. Kaya yung 120 days or yung 90 to 120 days, you should count it from the date of the finality of the judgment or the session rendered by the court. Let's go back to our bar question. What is the period indicated in that order that is 120 days? 120 days from when? From the date of the receipt of the order. Magkaibang magkaiba sa nakasulat sa section 2. Therefore, itong ating judge ay gumawa ng sarili niyang procedure. Kasi nga, very clear naman si section 2 that the period of 90 to 120 days should be counted from the entry of judgment or from the finality of the judgment. But let us just assume that itong si judge sa ating bar question ay hindi nag-issue nag ng order but rather he issued a judgment and that judgment is dated August 10, 1999. So kung yan ay August 10, 1999, therefore itong si AB, he has 15 days to file his appeal or he has up to August 25, 1999. And kung hindi siya nag-appeal, therefore, when is the date of the finality of the judgment? That is this, uh, August 25, 1999. That is the date of the finality of the judgment. But when did AB tender the amount? Tender, AB tendered the amount on December 20, 1999. Pasok pa rin ba si AB sa 90 up to 120 day period? Answer is yes. Pasok pa rin si AB. Bakit? Because he has until December 24, 1999 within which to pay the amount due. So these are the instances wherein your petition for certiorari will prosper. Enough with the bar question. Let's go back to the procedure. So after the lapse or the expiration of that 90 to 120 day period, ikaw mortgager still not able to pay the mortgage debt. What will happen next? There will be a foreclosure sale. And after the foreclosure sale, the judge should issue an order confirming the foreclosure sale. But take note, ha? take note. Take note that si judge hindi ura-urada maglalabas ng order confirming the foreclosure sale. Hindi yan automatic on the part of the judge to issue that order. Bakit? Kasi kailangan muna mag-file ni mortgagee ng motion for the confirmation of the sale. There must be a motion first filed. What is the basis? That is your section 3. Very clear that there must be a motion. And what is the requirement of that motion for the confirmation of the sale? It requires a notice and a hearing. That motion for the confirmation of the sale requires a notice and a hearing to grant an opportunity to the mortgager to show cause why the sale should not be confirmed. Kung i-differentiate mo yan from this motion, yung first motion, motion for the sale of the mortgage property, or what we call motion for execution, sila ay magkaiba. Bakit sila ay magkaiba? Remember that this motion for execution, it does not require a notice and hearing. In fact, you can file that 
ex parte. Sabi nga natin, yung notice of sale, you do not need to notify the mortgager because that notice is not litigable and that is ministerial on the part of the judge to issue that notice of sale. Kaya yung motion for execution does not require a notice and it does not require a hearing. Magkaiba sila dito sa motion for the confirmation of the sale because this motion requires a hearing. Dapat merong hearing. At ano ang effect kung walang notice and hearing? If si judge maglalabas ng order confirming the foreclosure sale, that order is void. Bakit ganyan ang rule? Because of due process. That is because of due process. Dapat si mortgager, dapat inotify mo siya that the foreclosure sale will be confirmed by the court because so that you will give the mortgager that opportunity to oppose or to resist the motion. Bakit ganyan? Bakit nga ganyan kasi ang rule? Because you read your section 3. What is the effect if there will be now an order confirming the foreclosure sale? What is the result? Ano ang sinasabi ni section 3? Very clear. That order confirming the foreclosure sale, it will divest the right of the mortgager in the property. It shall operate to divest the rights in the property of all the parties to the action and it will vest the right in the purchaser. Kaya ganyan ang rule dapat merong notice and hearing. Another important matter that I want you to remember is that ikaw mortgager kung hindi ka nakabayad during that equity of redemption at kahit naglapse na yung equity of redemption, kahit expired na yung period, ikaw mortgager, you still have the chance to pay your utang. As long as you pay your utang before the judge will issue an order confirming the foreclosure sale, you still have that opportunity to pay your utang as long as you do it before the judge will issue an order confirming the foreclosure sale. Pag meron ng order confirming the foreclosure sale, wala ka na talagang opportunity to pay your utang. Bakit? Because again, very very clear, see section 3, pag meron ng order confirming the foreclosure sale, what is the effect? What is the result? It will divest mortgager your right in the property. Segway tayo kay foreclosure sale. So what is the rule that will govern? That is your rule 39, particularly section 15. So what is the requirement? The notice of sale should be posted for 20 days in three public places. At kung ang assessed value ng property is more than 50,000 pesos, aside from posting in three public places, dapat meron ding publication. Publication in one newspaper once a week for two consecutive weeks. Take note ha, once a week for two consecutive weeks in one newspaper. Also, you have to give a written notice of the sale to the judgment obliger at least three days before the sale. Ano pa ang requirement ng batas? The notice of sale should indicate the place of the sale, the date of the sale, and the exact time of the sale. But as far as the place of the sale is concerned, take note that it can be agreed upon by the parties. Babalikan natin to when we are going to discuss yung extrajudicial foreclosure sale. And you will see there that magkaiba sila ng requirements. Magkaibang magkaiba. As early as now, I'm going to tell you na mahaba ang discussion ng Rule 68. Hindi ko kasi kayang paiksiin because remember that your Rule 68 is a... Um, if you're going to compare your Rule 68 to other 
rules like yung rule 63 mas nagagamit palagi si rule 68 marami kasi ang nangungutang at hindi nakakapag bayad kaya pagtitingnan mo yung mga decisions ng Supreme Court maraming lumalabas na decision about rule 68 rather than your other special civil actions mas nagagamit to mas relatable to sa mga tao kaya Pasensya na kung mahaba talaga yung discussion, wala akong magagawa. Also, pasensya na kung ngayon lang na-upload yung part 3 at saka yung part 4. Natapos ko na actually yung discussion nito, kaya lang nung pinapakinggan ko, merong problema sa audio. Again, nagkakaroon na naman ako ng issue sa audio, kaya inulit ko na naman ang aking discussion, inulit ko na naman ang pagre-record. Down to our last video, dito na muna tayo magtatapos kasi mahaba na naman. So, after the judge issues an order confirming the foreclosure sale, what can you do next? What is your remedy? You can file an appeal. That order is appealable. Therefore, your remedy is appeal. You can file an appeal. Or, you can also file an action for the annulment of the mortgage and foreclosure sale. Pag binasa mo yung mga Supreme Court decisions, usually yung ground nila dito sa annulment of the mortgage is yung consent. Nagkaroon ng problema sa consent or nagkaroon ng fraud. But yung annulment of the foreclosure sale, one of the grounds that you can raise there is, what did we say again? Kung yung motion for the confirmation of the sale hindi naka uh, indicate ng not walang notice and hearing therefore you can use that as a ground for your annulment of foreclosure sale kaya paulit-ulit kong sasabihin sa inyo that the motion for the confirmation of the sale it requires a notice and a hearing lack of notice vitiates the confirmation of the sale